and then look ahead to Davidson on Sunday. So looking back to Sunday, I thought it was a good start for us. Um, we've got a lot of dates left on the calendar, but I thought it was a really good start. Um, you know, we preach a lot about scoring points and entertaining and uh, having a product out there that people like to watch. And I think the people that watch us this first weekend liked what they saw. But, you know, as we know, as we get further into this month in December, the degree of difficulty is going to go up. But as far as this past weekend, really, really good. Um, you know, we probably get... You know, as far as the guys, you know, we got everybody wrestling this weekend. We've got a bunch of guys wrestling on Saturday at the Grandview Open. Some really good guys. And then we've got 10 guys that will figure out who's going to wrestle on Sunday. Um, probably going to be a harder day on Saturday than Sunday. And that's not taking anything away from Davidson. They're young. Um, I like the energy that Nate Carr Jr. has. And, of course, Marcus Coleman's there now. So we got some familiar faces that will be back in Ames this weekend. Um, so it's a, it's a new program. It's a growing program. And so I'm sure they're – probably sending a message to their guys that this is what it looks like maybe at the next step or the next level. Um, but that doesn't take anything away from what we need to do. We need to go out and do what we did this weekend. You talk about um, wrestling an entertaining style and putting points on the board, obviously new three-point takedown rule. We all had our ideas of what that might look like, but seeing it in practice, what's your um, take on the new rules that were implemented? Well, I think the thing that's probably the most obvious, and I kind of sensed it and, and you saw it firsthand, is that when there's a little bit of a gap between two guys, it's real easy for the, the, the match to get to bonus point territory. So you saw majors and tech falls a lot quicker and a lot easier. I mean, you think about it, you get three takedowns uh, and, you know, in the first period and it's nine to two, you know, so you're almost in major, you know, you get, you pick bottom the second period and you get away, it's 10 to two in three minutes and one seconds. So um, it, it can, it can get away from you fast if you're the, on the wrong side of that. Younger said he loves it. Yeah, he likes to, <laughs> Younger likes takedowns. And, you know, I think the thing from Younger this weekend is he had a really big guy, and he had a guy that was pretty good on top. And, you know, he, he went out and took a bad shot right away. Um, and when you shoot, you're going to make some mistakes every now and then. And, and the guy got behind him right away, and boom, he, he got tested early. But I thought it was good the way he came back. He didn't get rattled at all. He had to really work to get away from a big guy. And then, you know, his, his cardio and shape took over. He kept telling me, uh, all off season that coach you'll see I'm a different guy when I don't have to cut weight and I have I'll have my energy and I got a big gas tank and so he made me a little bit of a believer this weekend but he's got a lot more 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 believing for me to, to, to understand he's got a big gas tank but it's getting there what's what did you learn about Kyson when he had to spend most of the season without wrestling for the first time in his life at least since he started yeah you know anytime you come back from a, a labrum or a acl they're just slow heels and, and and it takes a while to get back in the groove so you know he wrestled what in the all-star meet late november early december so 11 months ago and you tear your labrum and you have surgery and you're seven eight months before you can do anything wrestling wise and so he got back on the mat right when school started uh, missed all spring all summer um and you know i think he's still not where he needs to be but I like mostly that he went out there and, you know, you're going to, at this level, Division One, you're going to be in a dogfight every first period. That's just the name of the game. I don't care who you're wrestling. That, that first period is going to be a dogfight. And then you start to see the separation. And, you know, I felt like he put the foot on the gas in the second and third period. And, and a lot of times I don't think he has. So I like that early in the season. You know, we got to keep doing that. What? Uh, but I mean, with Kyson, too, I mean, he's a guy who's been an NCAA qualifier in the past and has those lofty goals of going higher. I mean, obviously, he's still coming off this injury, but I mean, what are those expectations or that ceiling you think he can reach, though, with this game? He's a tremendous athlete. He's got a tremendous ceiling, but he's got to understand consistency. And, you know, and I talk about it all the time, doing the little things, and he's never been able to do that. You know, uh, I mean, I'm a guy that's always going to tell you like it is. He's got to figure that out. He's got to be good week in, week out. He's got to manage his weight good. He's got to manage his life good. And he's always kind of been like a, uh, you know, a good high school wrestler that you, you, you can't get by at this level by being a good high school wrestler out of the wrestling room. So he's got to train like a professional. If he trains like a professional, the sky's the limit for that guy. Talk about the Frost brothers. Yeah, I thought they did a good job, obviously. You know, even the match we lost, um, you know, he made a couple mistakes. You could tell he was a freshman. and. And, you know, now if you get thrown to your back, it's a seven-point movie. You, you give up two seven-point moves, that's 14 points. But I know we got a lot more takedowns in that match, but you, you just didn't, you know, he, he just made some mistakes. Uh, Evan's really wrestling well right now. 
uh, the one at 133. I still can't tell them apart. But I'll, by the time <laughs> I told them if they kick enough butt this year, I'll start to tell them apart. So <laughs> right now we're not there, but we're getting there. So um, I like them. They work hard. They got big tanks. Um, they're gonna they're gonna win a lot of matches at Iowa State before they're done. How far are Chittam and Feldkamp away from seeing the map? Chittam will be if we have a, all this is assuming we have a good week of practice. We're gonna train hard today, Wednesday and Thursday. So we got three hard days of training. If if everything goes well, the, you'll see Chittam this weekend. I think Feldkamp's about a week away assuming that we get through this training. But uh, see, I don't know where you'll see Chittam. You'll either see him at Grandview or you'll see him Sunday. We're trying to figure that out, but um, you'll see him. Mm. With a guy like Younger who came in here from Cuba and then has just seen this growth from him as a human being and also as a wrestler over time, I guess how gratifying is that to see a guy like him just grow throughout his career here? And his English is better too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Well, he's been here a couple years ago. It was sign language. <laughs> right? um, no, he's been fun. He's um, He's... He, it's important to him and you know he's really worked at it uh, he, he loves to be on the mat he's one of those guys that kind of like David he likes to learn a lot and he likes to learn a lot more now that we're feeding him all the time he didn't like to learn as much when we weren't feeding him as much but uh, he's gonna be um, he's gonna he's gonna be a contender in every match he shakes hands this year that's for sure was it your intent to have like a car family reunion these first two weeks um, I guess when we started putting together the schedule and I knew David was coming back it, you know, it was my idea. I just like to do some different stuff every now and then. And so I thought, what a, you know, he hadn't wrestled. I don't think he's re- we've wrestled in Ohio since he's been here. And I said, well, what a cool way to kick off the season, go back there and um, and start him off uh, the season at, at his old high school. So it was a good weekend. Mm-hmm. What really inspires you to make these, you know, duels have, you know, like Ben just said, it, David, David Carr family reunion, and you have Marcus Coleman in the corner. Um, what has really pushed you to make these types of schedules work? Well, first and foremost, we need to take care of our Hilton fans. So, you know, we got a great home schedule. We got Missouri, we got West Virginia, we got Iowa, we got you and I, we got Pitt, and I'm probably missing somebody. And obviously, we got Davidson. So, I think we got we're home seven times. Plus, we're going to do an open tournament in February. So, it's eight times. So, I think that's a really good schedule. And then you start piecing everything together after that. So when I schedule, Hilton's always my first priority. And then, you know, obviously I'm really um, uh, attached to the humble people. And they do a great job for us in terms of helping us with our regional training center and now our collective. So, um, and I, I like, I know our guys like that venue. They love being in, you know, 1,500 people sitting right on top of you. So it's one of the ones that they talk about all the time. So it's a fun place to wrestle. If it wasn't a fun place to wrestle, I don't. we wouldn't renew it, but it's a fun place to wrestle. And uh, we didn't get quite the crowd we wanted in Ohio, but the crowd we got there was really, uh, really loud. I heard the people that did the broadcast uh, with the, the fight pass did a really good job. So I think it was a good start. Yeah, they did. Um... What, why didn't Broderson wrestle? Broderson was under the weather a little okay. bit. He got, he got a bug on Friday and I said, yeah, man, we're not going to, we're not going to uh, put you out there, but you know, I like it when the next man up's ready to go. And, you know, I think, uh, Nando had, we always give out a, we call it a big head of the week, which is basically our MVP for the week. And, uh, I think Nando probably earned that cause he beat a top 25 guy right out of the shoot in his first match. So, uh, he was ready to go and I'll tell you what, he's hard to wrestle. He's, He's got a really big gas tank, and is, he's really hard to score on. So he's he's going to be a guy that's always going to be competitive. Going with that, when do you want to see your lineup finalized? Because obviously, 33, 41, 49, and then 97 are all kind of there. Yeah, we got a lot. We got a lot to figure out there. You know, these next two, everybody's going to be in the game. That's the great thing. Is so we've got a dual meet this weekend, and then we got a dual meet next weekend with Wisconsin. Um, so we got what Davidson, Wisconsin, and then we got. Also, uh, the Grandview Open, and then we're going to go to uh, South Dakota State's got an open the following weekend. So after those two weeks, you know, everybody's going to have a shot. In fact, the guys that go to Grandview, their stock can actually rise more uh, by the week by the end of the weekend than the guys going to Davidson. So um, they're actually kind of in the driver's seat in terms of just getting maybe increasing a national ranking. So we're going to send some guys in, even some, maybe a few starters even to, to that as well. I mean, what does it say about the depth, not only there when you have guys at Grandview that are pushing for that, and then in general when you have guys like, you know, step up and when you have someone fall down due to injury or getting sick, yep. you know, when you have the ability to have, you know, people step up or a depth at multiple positions. No, right depth's now. important, and, and we've got depth at a lot of weights. You know, we've got depth at a lot of weights right now, so I like that. How have you seen guys respond to the opportunity to be able to wrestle for these spots? Well, I hope they're so competitive. You know, I try to keep, you know, when, they, when there's two guys really, really competing for a weight, you know, they need to compete all year long. And the guy that's, 
that, that stays in there the longest and is the toughest is going to get the spot at the end of the year. So, um, you know, you obviously are going to get kind of who's the leader of the pack here by the time we get the second semester. But right now, there's a lot up for grabs and some wrestle-offs to happen and so forth. Talk about the opportunity um, on Sunday to have Marcus Coleman in the coach's corner um, across from you. Yeah, that'd be good to get Marcus back. Um, I think he's going to stay. He's getting ready to go compete in a big freestyle event with uh, Sam Schuyler and Duncan Lee, some of our RTC athletes. So he's uh, going to stay here and train uh, till he goes out to the Bill Farrell, which is in New York um, in mid-November, late November. So he'll stay in town. Is it cool for you as a coach to see guys that you really help transform their careers and then see them graduate and go on to be their own coach, be a coach themselves? Yeah, that just means you're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> just means you're getting old. All right. All right.